Hey guys, it's Amy with Too Blessed. Uh, this week's video, I'm going to be talking about my chronic kidney disease. Um, I know my last video on gastroparesis was really long, so I'm going to try to make this one a little shorter um, and just a little more to the point. Um, I had a lot of information to share about gastroparesis, and I feel like kidney disease is a little more common, maybe a little more well known. So I'm not going to share as many of the details. I'll just tell a little bit more about me specifically. Um, so basically, like I said before, I have diabetes. Um, diabetes really causes a lot of problems in the body. Um, diabetes caused my retinopathy, the trouble with my eyes. It caused my gastroparesis, and now it has also caused what is called chronic kidney disease, um, which basically means I am, you know, it, it's also referred to as kidney failure. Um, I am I am almost at end stage renal disease, which is there's four stages to kidney disease, and I'm I'm kind of on the borderline between stage three and stage four. Um, so we, we already have had meetings about transplant and talking about dialysis and things like that, but I have not started dialysis yet um, or anything like that. So basically what has happened is the issues that I had with gastroparesis, um, the vomiting, which in turn leads to dehydration has put an incredible strain on my kidneys. Um, every time I get hospitalized because of the gastroparesis, um, I'm usually dehydrated and then they would pump me full of fluid. And once I got out of the hospital, then they would have to give me pills to help me get rid of the fluid because there was just so much. I literally, I would go in the hospital for a week and when I came out of the hospital, I would weigh sometimes 60 pounds more than when I went into the hospital. Um, so you can imagine what that does to your kidneys, doing that over and over and over again. Um, so over the course of the last few years, um, I've been sick with gastroparesis for about a little over five years, probably six years, something like that. So over the course of those five years or so, just constantly being dehydrated, um, you know, pumping me full of fluid, then taking the fluid off, it just, it really just destroyed my kidneys um, to the, you know, to the point that they just, they can't recover anymore. You know, the, sometimes they would, they would show that they were being affected, but then it would kind of come back again. But that that just can't happen anymore um so the kidney disease um like i said the the biggest impact it's having right now is the fluid i retain a lot of fluid that's why i look like the stay puff marshmallow man most days um it also causes it causes me to have low iron so I've had to get iron infusions. Um, my vitamin D is low, so I have to take vitamin D supplements. My calcium is low. Um, it really just, it affects a lot of parts of your bodies. It makes me very tired. Um, actually, the, the kidney disease itself can actually cause nausea and vomiting as well. Um, so sometimes if I'm nauseous, it, I don't know, is it the gastroparesis or is it the kidneys that's causing it? There's really no way to tell. Um, so right now we, we have started preparing for dialysis. Um, I just talked to my kidney doctor the last time I was there and she is hoping that perhaps I won't have to go on dialysis. Um, because they're finding that dialysis is so hard on the body that they really just don't want to do it unless they have to. So, you know, we kind of were thinking like, hey, we need to start dialysis so I can get rid of this fluid so I can feel better. Um, but what she explained to us is that 
in the long run, the dialysis can actually, like, can weaken your body. And so she just wants to put it off as long as she can. And that, it really made sense to me um, to do that. But we're, we're starting to get ready so that in case we have to do it, we will be prepared. Um, because it could be that when, when it comes time to start dialysis, if we need to do that, we might have to start suddenly. You know, it might, it might be that I get really sick and while I'm in the hospital, my kidneys just stop and we might have to start dialysis. So we want to be ready. Um, so the first thing that we have to do before they can do dialysis is I have to have an access point for the dialysis to be administered. And that access point is actually going to be in the forearm. Um, now, because of, again, all of the sickness that I've had, my veins are shot. Um, when I go to the doctor and they try to draw blood, it's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult um, because my veins are just, they, they, I've always heard and been told that I have tiny veins. And then on top of that, they've been weakened and just used over and over again. And it's just, it's really hard for them to find a spot. So what they do for dialysis is they put an access, like I said, they put an access point into your forearm, into a vein. Um, but because my veins are so weak, they had to make the veins stronger. So I actually had a surgery. I had this done in October of last year where they took an artery in the upper part of my arm and right here at the inside of the elbow, they connected it to one of the veins that's in my forearm. And so now the artery is supplying blood to that vein, which is making the vein grow stronger and bigger. And when it gets big enough, then they will be able to put uh, what they call a fistula into my forearm and that is where the dialysis will hook up and and go through the arm um, so I saw the surgeon last week and he said it's looking good they're gonna have to do another procedure um, now what they have to do is take the vein now that it's getting big enough they have to go in there and they have to lift the vein up so that it's nearer to the surface of the skin so I will be having to have another procedure done, um, but he wants to put it off a little bit longer because when I had the initial surgery done, the anesthesia made me extremely sick and I ended up in the hospital for so something like three or four days or something like that. So he's just wanting to wait a little bit longer before we do that next step. Um, so I have to go back in another six weeks and see where we are there. Um, so, as far as avoiding dialysis, um, the, uh, the only other option other than dialysis is to get a kidney transplant. Um, now, kidneys are the one organ that can be received from a live donor because everybody has two kidneys, but you can survive with one kidney. Um, so, I do actually have a family member. Um, I'm not going to say who it is right now, but I have a family member who is willing to donate a kidney and we have gone through the initial testing and they have said that this family member is a match, um, but there is more testing that we need to do um, before they can determine if, if I can receive that kidney. Um, because another option that we can do is if if they think that that kidney is not a good good one for me um, this family member could donate a kidney and it could go to someone else and then i could possibly receive a kidney from another donor they they can cross match um, the donors so you know we're not we're not a hundred percent sure what's going to happen there yet but we're going through that process of getting testing done and things like that um, the other thing is that I have some things that need to be done before I can be approved for a transplant. And the main one is that I have a lot of dental work that needs to be done. Um, and that the majority of that has been caused by 
the gastroparesis that I have um, because, I mean, for a long time I was vomiting on probably a daily basis and that's a lot of acid on your teeth. So all of my back teeth, almost all of them, I've got a few on the top on the right side, but almost all of my back teeth um, we're just having to remove and then I've got a few cavities in in some of the other ones that are going to be filled but I have to have all of that done um, and then I just have to have a few a few other little things um, done but mostly the dental work once the dental work is done um, then what will happen is they will I have a transplant coordinator. Um, she will gather all of my information, put it all together. Um, we're going through Vanderbilt University in Nashville for the transplant. Um, so she will take all of my information, all of my records, you know, all, all the documentation that they need. Um, like once my dental work is done, I have to get a form signed by the dentist saying that everything's done and everything's okay. Um, and then she will take all that information and she has to present my case um, to the transplant board and then they actually have to approve me to be able to receive a transplant so it's kind of a crazy process um but you know we're trying we're just we're trying to get everything done and and see if we can move forward with this so you know there's a there's a good chance that i might be able to get a transplant this year and that would be really great <laughs> um we were told when we went we went for like an orientation for the transplant program they told us that the average kidney that is transplanted the average is that it lasts about eight to ten years um but my kidney doctor actually told us that um, with, you know, improvements that are being made to the medicines and things like that, that it, it's more like possibly 20 years now. So that, that would be wonderful if it would last 20 years. Um, we're going to be doing some, we're going to have to do some fundraisers um, for the transplant. Um, once I get, once you receive a transplant, there are anti-rejection medicines that you have to take for the rest of your life. Um, one of the medications costs $5,000 for one month. And when they said when we initially, like when I initially receive the transplant, um, when I'm ready to leave the hospital, we have to be prepared to pay for those medicines out of our own pocket when we leave the hospital. Um, you know, just, just in case there's any issue with insurance or anything like that. Um, and I could, I could only have to take one of those medicines. I could have to take two. I could have to take three. And each one of them is several thousand dollars. So we have to be prepared for that cost. Um, we also have to be prepared for travel expenses because um, Nashville is, uh, I can't think how far away it is right now, but it's a couple of hours away from us. Um, my husband is going to have to take off work when I get ready to have the transplant um, because he is going to have to be there with me. And we don't know exactly for how long, but with his job, he does not get paid time off. So any time that he takes off is going to be unpaid and we, we will have no income. So we're going to be trying to come up with some fundraising ideas and some different things like that. So um, I would love to hear from anyone that has any suggestions. If you know of a fundraiser that somebody did, you know, I'd like, I want to do something that would stand out, that would be different from like a typical fundraiser. Um, maybe something, some kind of fun activity or, you know, something like that. We're thinking of probably doing some type of like a silent auction type of thing. Um, but let me know, 
you know, if you if you have any ideas, if you know of someone who has gone through this, um, if you have gone through this, or if you're going through it now, leave me a comment. Let me know um, what it's like. Let me know what you've done. Let me know what someone else has done that you know of. Um, I would love to hear from you. If you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. Um, I really want to build a community where we can we can talk about things. You can ask me questions, um, whatever you want. I feel like I'm saying um a lot in this video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting tired. It's late at night. <laughs> so, uh, and there I go again. I will see you in my next video. Um, I've got some more kind of fun videos planned coming up hopefully. I All I've been making so far is just the videos talking about my health conditions. I'm going to be filming a thrift haul pretty soon which actually may be up before I put this one up. I'm not sure. And I've got some like projects that I'm trying to film videos for. So I would love to have you subscribe and be a part of this and you'll just be notified when I post a new video. So again if you have suggestions for me, questions, comments, whatever, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video.